another good practice today. Uh, I think that the, the break off was good for them. They'll have another one coming up. But there was good energy out here at practice and very competitive and a lot of different drills uh, today. Um, obviously proud of Marquise for as a true sophomore to, to win the Blitnikoff Award is a really big deal. First one in the history of the school and um, that credit goes obviously to him but to a lot of other people as well. Uh, like we told the team this morning that, that wouldn't happen without the quarterbacks or the offensive linemen, the tight ends, running backs or or the service team uh, defensive players or a guy like Nikel Roby that for, uh, for two years has battled him one-on-ones all the time. So um, anytime an individual award happens, a lot of people are to be credited in the team sport. Did you pay any attention to the fact that he wasn't listed on the, on the, on the watch list for that award in the preseason? Uh, Marquis wasn't? Um, no, I don't even think I knew that. Or maybe I did. Um, but it speaks yeah, to I think I asked. I think I asked him um, and said it didn't really matter whether you're on the preseason list or not. But does that speak to the fact that he was not an unknown or anything like that, but um, not a favorite for something like this, and that this was somewhat of a surprise for him this year? Well, I think it. I think it really shows what a dominant season that he had. You know, to, to go from, uh, like you said, not being on that list to winning it. Uh, you, you better really win the award and have a dominant season you know, to come from that far behind. So, you know, his his runs of games that he would put together and the performances. Uh, I think that. I would guess, I don't know, I would guess the voting probably wasn't close. Anything else, guys? Easy day. Lane, can you talk about your conversation with Nathan Garcia, the, the kid from Bakersfield, and what uh, what you think of that story and him doing the toy drive? And yeah, pretty rough story. Um, I didn't know much about it, really. I actually didn't know that that, that, that was Nathan. I was on the... Trojan walk and I, I don't know what something drew me over to this kid um, and I, I didn't know until later that was him and I didn't even know about the story at the time um, and then it was uh, in an email that I think Cody's mother had sent down here um, about what that meant so uh, just a, a really rough story and uh, I was able to get his phone number and call him yesterday um, and called a family and then I, I told the story to our team this morning and uh, gave the number in all their lockers so they could text or call today um, just really a tragic story for anybody, but I uh, just wanted our, also our players to remember how fortunate they are. Anytime they think about complaining about something um, in their lives, a uh, story like that, and, um, and that we're all we're all leaders, you know. And we're you know for that kid to look up and just want to be what they are, you know. Um, I think it, it's um, pretty tragic. Does stuff like this affect you more because you have kids too? Yeah, it does. Um, Tim, Tim and I were just talking about that. I think obviously once you have kids, and uh, especially stories about younger kids, um, you know, flying home yesterday from El Paso and um, seeing seeing your own kids uh, remind us how fortunate we are to, to have healthy kids. All right, thanks, guys.